it's time for a more complex scenario. We have a precast column with some accessories inside. So let's firstly get this from the model side. I will use the official link. Uh, let's select the main part and let's try to create just a cast unit drawing. Let's provide it as a cast unit. Wait a while and yes, we have a new drawing on the document manager. So let's um, open this drawing just to get it visible. Okay, here it is. Uh, I was not prepared, so yeah, the settings are not correct. So maybe let's start with a fresh one. Uh, so I will get all of the drawings, all of the views at the drawing and delete them. Okay, first drawing we can start now. This first time when I was creating the drawing is mainly the single one. Usually you will be manipulating over the existing drawing. So now I will just disable all of those components and get the active drawing because this is the most typical use case. So let's start with the active drawing and yeah, let's add some new view. So I will want to add the part view and I have to specify the drawing and then the type of the drawing. And we can use this value list as an input where you can just pick uh, one of those provided types. So I will create the front view and I am not sure where exactly it should be. So I will just use the point 000 as a start. And here it is the standard view. Uh, it doesn't look nice. I think that those settings should be a little different and you can always provide them with the name of the attributes just to get the most uh, common, how you would like. I will try with this one. So I will provide name of those settings and give it them here. Okay, yeah, that's the plain, uh, plain view without any annotations. For this example, it should be enough. Okay, so I have it and yeah, the placement is not the best, so let's add some slider. Mm, I'm not sure how it was, but let's check it out in this. Okay, and now I will yeah, move a little upside and just to make it uh, faster provide a fixed value for the X, maybe 150. Yeah, okay. For now, it will be enough. So, I have the view. It is the front view. I can have the top view, etc. etc. You get the point. But the simple view, the rendering of those parts is not very interesting. I want to dimension accessories and overall dimension of this column. So, to do it properly, I have to somehow go back to the model. So let's check what was the source of the drawing. I will try to get the cast unit, which was the father, which is the origin of, the, of this drawing. And at this point, I have the model object. So we can freely use the official link and try to deconstruct assembly. So here I will provide the drawing source and I will get some properties. And what I get? I get the name of the cast unit, I get the type and also the main part and a list of secondaries. And the secondaries are what now I am the most interested in because of what I have here. I have 19 assemblies and three secondary parts. So this slip, beam and beam are just those corbels. Three corbels, three secondary parts. And all of the rest are sub-assemblies, which should be probably dimensioned on the drawings. So I have to somehow, you know, filter those assemblies and those slabs. So yeah, as always in Grasshopper, there is a plenty of way how to do it. I will just use the match text. I think it will be the, the easiest one. So I will use the power of internal casting of objects. And I would like just to get the assembly name. And by doing it, I am getting yeah, where it is true or not. So let's split our list of some assemblies into two. And I think it can be done by this dispatch. 
let's provide a list and a pattern and now i will get yeah here i have the assemblies and here i have the secondary parts okay uh, now i want mainly to focus over assemblies because uh, it's not the real production uh, case but let's go with them uh, there are plenty of possibilities how those assemblies uh, sub assemblies could be modeled they could be the items they could be just uh, simple beams they could be the, uh, the custom parts there are different possibilities so that's the reason why you have also i would say mainly two possibilities two opportunities so at first at first you can get the custom part points then if something is a custom part then you will get those start and end point the yellow and the purple one but if something is not that uh, so you could use these part lines and then as previously you will get the reference line so the yellow and the uh, you know <laughs> the purple or the center line it it depends what are your needs of course uh, so this is the the way how you can obtain the geometry but there is also one more thing now we have in one bag all of those of sub assemblies so we have those yeah those <laughs> those bars which are above the the column and above the core bar we have the lifting anchors and also we have some uh, some column shoes so it's not very interesting because we would like not to have all of them on a single dimension line we would like them to be splitted by some by some logic by some business logic i would say so you have to somehow group those assemblies you can do it with the probably plain tecla link but you can also do it with the group objects so if you use the group objects and you provide the list of our assemblies yeah i know that it's it getting worse and worse but okay uh, it's just going to some side quests so now you get um, two different lists you get the list of keys and also the list of indices so now you know which primary elements are grouped into which category and if you right click on these group objects you can group them by different ways you can group them by name or by class here it is not not not, not revised by UDA, by UDA or by report so let's go with something crazy and provide the report property wave it doesn't make sense but you I would just want to <laughs> show you the possibility probably you will be grouping by assembly position because it will uh, move the, respons the responsibility over it to the Tecla. Tecla is responsible for uh, providing the assembly uh, positions. So when you will have this grouping, then you will be able to provide to those custom part points, part points or part lines uh, necessary input objects. So at the end, you will get the dimension lines per the group of the same objects. Of course, your business logic maybe is a little different. Maybe you are not grouping only by the position or by name, but also by some location on the on the, on the element. Then you have to do it somehow differently. Of course, you have the rich set of tools in the Tecla official link, uh, in the drawing link, and if there is something missing for you, then just give a sign. Okay, so what are the next steps? So we have the indices, so let's get the list item. And as a list, let's provide this input and those indices, it will be here. So at the, as a result, we will get the, the, the grouped assemblies. And now, yeah, let's go a little faster and provide this one. So I will get the points. But I have some uh, new elements, so let's clean the tree. And here is our tree, and we should also specify that we would like to remove empty ones. Okay, and by doing it, I get the points. So now we have the grouped set of points, and the only missing one is the creation of the dimension line. But it will be very easy similar to what we have done in the previous examples so for today that's all if you have any ideas any propositions or we will spot some bugs probably there are some please give a sign have a nice day